morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today actually is a morning. I'm sorry about the bad lighting because I don't really know where to light myself properly. But hello, how are we today? And today is the final final unboxing reviewing of the chat of today. So yesterday, big package in the mail. I would have done this unboxing yesterday when I got this, but I actually was at work from like two till ten. So I wasn't here when this delivered. It was too dark to record when I got home, so we're gonna open this now and go through it. So Ooh. no prizes to guess what this is. There it is. Get rid of the box. And here it is. Here it is. The brand new season 24 Doctor Who Blu-ray box set. So, this is number nine in the line. Obviously, this is a follow-on from the season eight box set that we had earlier in the year. They were announced at the exact same time. Uh, this is Sylvester McCoy's first season. So, uh, main cast obviously being Sylvester McCoy, uh, Bonnie Langford, and then Sophie Aldrin joins the cast at the end of the season. We also have the return of Kate O'Mara in Time of the Rani, and we have some new we also have some returning character other returning characters like uh oh i think it's glitz is his name from trial of a time lord and he makes the return so yeah glitz makes his loveliest return and yeah here is the big box set i will i will say again another big chunky box set another good amount of text on here look at all that text and we're now going to read it so you got ex exclusive extended uh, versions of each episode. This also came in. This also is very similar to the Trial of the Time Lord box set, where they did extended edits of that, featuring untransmitted material and the optional 5.1 surround sound. Very nice. In conversation with Matthew Sweet, chats to Sylvester McCoy about his life. I do love those in-depth conversations with doctors. They're great. Career and time as the seventh Doctor. More behind the sofa. We've got four new episodes. With all star lineups of classic Doctor Who guests. Here's to the future a brand new feature length documentary examining uh, season 24 in detail. Do love the documentaries. I love when they put brand new documentaries on there to coincide with the ones that were in the early 2000s and maybe some even for the 80s. I'm not too sure. I don't think we've actually ever had one that early. Um, oh no, sort of. We had that like what the making of documentaries and like the Last Chance Saloon sort of. That was quite. Oh, no, that's a good documentary though, I love that one. Uh, yep, document. we've got lots of documentaries including another brand new, make, new making of documentary of Delta and the Bannerman. Very excited for that. Uh, the Doctor's Table, Sylvester McCoy, Bonnie Langford, so Sophie Aldrin and Clyde Merrison reminisce about their time making season 24. That sounds very exciting. I, ju I just love the whole reminiscent when they're all just talking to each other. Exclusive... Uh, Archive treats, a treasure trove of previously unavailable content from the BBC Archive. Ooh, very nice. Uh, studio and footage location, hours of rare previously unseen footage from the original studio and location tapes. Those are always fun, just to have a little look back and see what was going on at the time. I really like. I do really like those, actually. Obviously, you've got your immersive surround sound scores, isolated music scores, Blu-ray trailers as always, and PDF writing archives, written archives, so you get all those standards in there, alongside uh, all your DVD stuff that was there, so you're making all three DVD, your feature, audio commentary, info text, and much more. So you get all your stuff, a lot of brand new bonus content on here, alongside all the jam-packed DVDs that already were. That's what's great about these sets, is the fact that they come with all the bonus features, which is very nice. So now is the time, we're going to... So obviously we've got the front, and now we're going to get into it. So the frame's coming off very nicely. That's what we like to see. New Blu-ray smell. So, here we have. We remove the J-card. As always, again, second one with that brand new 12 logo. Season 24. So on the front, I'll do a closer up look. So you obviously get Kate O'Mara, the Tet Trap, the... Uh, Chief Caretaker, his robot, uh, Delta, and you get the dragon from Dragonfire, uh, with, along with Sylvester McCoy with his uh, galactic spoons. Uh, on the front, you've got a picture of the uh, back, you've got a picture of the TARDIS for when um, the Rani 
uh, shoots it down in the beginning of the time of the Rani. I quite like that picture actually, it's quite a nice new one. Obviously you've got your spine. Yeah. Got me a J card as well, you've got the thingy as well. But yeah. Obviously standard design, discs on one side, uh, thingy on the other. So this is an eight disc set. Each disc comes with two parts, so you obviously get like so you like get part one and part two from each story. We'll look at the discs. So we have Silver and the Tetraf from Time of the Rani. We have Mel inside the ball from Time of the Rani. So obviously both episodes comes with two discs to accommodate their special features. Uh, the Doctor and the Caretaker. Mel and the two, what is it, the two granny people that are trying to eat, kill and eat her. Just the Doctor and Mel for uh, the first disc of Delta and the Bannerman. You've got the child and then you've got Delta. Oh, is it Delta? Or is it No, he's the leader of the Bannerman, sorry. I keep saying Delta. Dra uh, that scene where Mel leaves for the first disc of that. And then finally we just have lovely Ace right on the back there. Very nice. Look at her. S smiling away. Absolutely lovely. Love all the disc art. I think they look very nice. So on this side, on your normal side, you obviously have your standard picture where they hide the booklet. Uh, the first opening image is uh, from the Paradise Towers. The inside one uh, in front that replicates with the booklet is from Dragonfire. It's a very wide booklet, actually. And I really like this back, uh, the backdrop on this one. It's actually the uh, the TARDIS console room from the beginning of uh, Time of the Rani, where so you still got the Sixth Doctor there regenerating. And it looks really good. The de extra detail on it is fantastic. So of course you get your booklet. So obviously there's the nice art on the front there, very nice. You get your three actors on the back. So yeah, look at that. You've got all those special features for Time of the Rani. It's ridiculous. Original four episodes, updated regeneration, ooh, optional surround sound, audio commentary, isolated score, info text making of documentary, deleted and extended scenes behind the sofa with Peter Davison, Colin Baker, Bonnie Langford, Sophie, Ald Sophie Aldred, Janet Fielding, Sarah Sutton and Michael Jason. Casting featurettes, Seventh Doctor, audition tapes, location featurette, visual effect feat featurette and visual effects footage, title, sequ title sequence featurette, se Regeneration studio footage, hot gossip. All Kate O'Mara recalls the gossip-filled recording of her st second story. Saturday Superstore, but Bonnie Langford's appearance on it. Uh, big news: six o'clock. Sylvester McCoy is announced as Doctor Who. Blue Peter. Uh, that was that's with Sylvester McCoy's first appearance on it. Uh, Pamela Armstrong with Sylvester McCoy and John Nathan Turner. Breakfast time. A report on season. 24's first location shoot, Bre uh, breakfast time rushes, raw footage from location reports, it's wicked, Sylvester McCoy's appearance on it, point of view, viewers react to the new Doctor, Blue Peter, a look at a Dalek car, open air, Sylvester McCoy, Bonnie Langford and John Nathan Turner confront their fearsome adversary, yet Paddy Coldwell, not heard that one. Season four, season twenty-four press trailer, cleaning, clean and op clean opening and title, closing titles. So that's with new score and stuff like that. Rejected opening and title, uh, DVD Easter eggs uh, from the original DVD release. BBC trailers, uh, HD photo gallery coming soon for Paradise Towers. And PDF written, and then on disc two you get extended episodes. Also, the extended uh, episode on this one has. The untransmitted material and an updated regeneration sequence previously available as a DVD Easter egg. Plus optional surround sound, location footage and studio footage. Lovely. And of course like normal layouts so you get like production stills and then you have the nice artwork in there as well. Very nice. Not as much on Delta and the Bannerman as like you saw the one disc covered two pages. This is one disc and this is the second disc. So all original episodes, surround sound, audio commentaries, isolated score, alternative score, info text, making of documentary, deleted scenes behind the sofa, the doctor's table, uh, BBC trials and continues, open air, that one's Richard Bears, that one, conversation footage, fan interview with uh, director Nicholas Mallet. Cool. Yeah, just basically the same 
as the previous second disc, so extended episodes, uh, optional 5.1 surround sound, location footage, and studio footage. Very nice. Oh, I really like that, actually. This nice thingy. That, I've never really got the point of the crab bot in the pool. I need to rewatch Paradise Towers. I've not seen it in ages. Delta and the Bannerman. You're not your standard, like, all those. 50 Years in the TARDIS, an interview with Body Langford recorded in 2013. That's the 12th Doctor announcement. 50th Anniversary Archive, another interview with Bonnie Langford. Uh, behind the Sofa with uh, everyone. They're all on holiday in Wales, apparently. Obviously, it's Darren and Bannerman. Hugh Lloyd interview. Wales Today, a location report. Uh, but this first, a location report broadcasted for a children's magazine. But first, this rushes an extended compilation of, of location footage and interviews captured by this... But first, this this crew going live Sylvester McCoy's appearance on it did you see broadcast in 20 and the 22nd of the 11th 87 Noel Edmonds Saturday Roadshow Sylvester McCoy faces Judge Noel Edmonds on Roadshow segment Clown Court broadcasted uh, featuring mostly outtake sourced from Delta and the Bannerman with support Supporting evidence from the Awakening and Silver Nemesis. Fair enough. There's an extra. There's an extra um, bonus feature on the set on the second disc for Delta and the Bannerman. Rap party footage. Home video recorded of cast and crew cabaret. Oh, cabinet rap party. Featuring performances from artists including John Nafer Turner. That's fair enough. There's a lot of great bonus features in this. I can't lie to you. And disc seven. Same again with uh, most of the stuff. Heartbeat, Sylvester McCoy is interviewed during his run as the Pied Piper at the National Theatre. The role that convinced John F. Turner he was right. Corner, so uh, Sophie Aldrin visits Kelf McCoy to find out he records the music for Doctor Who. The Lowdown, Doc uh, Sylvester McCoy is interviewed about his role as the Pied Piper. Patricia Quinn interview, a newly recorded encounter with the Dragonfire actor and Rocky Horror, a cult figure. Uh, doc, the Doctor Strange love Doctor Who fans defend their love for Dragonfire. Ooh. And finally, ooh, and on the second one, maybe eight extended episodes and two new bonus features with, hit, well, I don't know if they're new. Here's to the future, a feature-length documentary charting the dawn of a new era uh, and you got 20, 24 carat the 7th Doctor and Mel are reunited in this specifically sh oh so they have the little mini episode that they did for the trailer that's um, on the second disc of Dragonfire and look at that look at that art on that lovely and then right at the end of the booklet right there you have all your details about the transfer so like peach, the picture was done by Peter Crocker, SVS, additional, you got uh, additional CGI, project managers, interviews, contributors, thanks to, thanks also to, it doesn't really tell you too much about the transfers on this, but I, re I probably, from my experience, They're mainly just upscales from the uh, VHS releases that they did. But, yeah, it's, the, it's just basically, you want these sets for all the special edition stuff, basically, don't you? But, yeah, a very in-depth booklet. Good to have that as well. So I've just popped in a couple of the discs to see what the transfer is looking like and to see some of the new extended features that have been added. So one thing I will mention is the uh, Time of the Ronnie's extended comes with, obviously they all come with untransmitted material, as I've said, uh, but the new one comes with an updated generation regeneration sequence. I must say, the first bit where the tires get hit by lasers doesn't look that good, to be fair. It kind of looks piss poor, to be honest, still. But the actual effect where the Tetrap turns silver over and he's supposed to turn from column to silver i quite like the update on that i like how you don't see how you can't see it's thingy's face and they've made it look still like with the eyes they've made it look like colin i do like that i will admit that transfer wise uh 
one thing that is to be said if you're a blu-ray collector and you're going into this they're all done from vhs upscales uh, not a lot like pretty much nothing in doctor who was done on film apart from like some bit in spearhead from space and um i think the 1980 movie no the 1990 movie but yeah most of the stuff is not going to look immaculate like say a good example that i can think of is like the twin peaks box set that was all shot on like film and stuff like that so the upscale on blu-ray looks fantastic whereas this like depending on like the newer and newer tv that you have the worse and worse it's gonna look so if you have like this old panasonic tv that i have here it actually looks quite good uh like better than the dvd but it's st still not like amazing quality like you're gonna get with like say like a good upscale blu-ray but nevertheless yep not too bad the extended episode of there's nothing really to mention about Paradise Towers. There's um, it's literally just untransmitted stuff. There's no like new special features or like or updated special effects in that one. Uh, so basically, also with Delta and the Bannerman special feature, as you can actually have part one, you can actually have the raw, uh, lo is it location? Uh, lo lo uh, you can have the actual uh, raw production sounds on episode one, which I think is quite interesting. I don't, th I've never seen like that before on a Doctor Who release which is quite cool and then Dragonfire uh, has a dual soundtrack so you can either listen to mono or 101 surround sound and the foot the VHS footage in part two is arguably a lot worse than the rest of it because of it, it's from a lower quality which is quite true a lot of the VHS stuff that they take does look quite piss poor but that's because you're copying from VHS and trying to upscale from VHS is just a losing battle but yeah, that is um, that is season twenty seven. I will mention twenty seven, twenty four. I will mention something though about this Blu Ray box set. Is the fact that I was just looking at this and I looked at the special feature. I looked at both discs for Time of the Rani. I looked at the spe the normal one with the episodes and all the special content, and the new one with the new updated feet. And I will say though, looking at the DVD, there is a few special features on here that haven't been transported over. Uh, the biggest one, which is kind of annoying, I actually had to look through the tw season twenty six box set as well to make sure that I wasn't being stupid. But last chance, a last chance saloon, which is a very great little documentary, which tells you about how they got the Doctor and how they recorded Time and the Rani and stuff like that. It's not on this box set like at all anywhere, which I think is a bit stupid because it's very. Imp I think it's a very important documentary. Uh, you also don't have Laker ticket. Laker Taya? I don't know how you say it. An investigation into the way the planet changed from na uh, from nature in nature from script to screen, and oh, Helter Skelter. An interview with the with the creator of Doctor Who's first CGI title sequence. So there's a few little bits that they're missing on it. There's no bonus disc on this one, so I, d I don't really know why they didn't do a bonus disc. Put it to nine, and then you could have put like all the little extra ones. They didn't know what to put. I'll put that on there because Last Chance Saloon. I every time I put this blue uh, DVD in and watch the episode, I'll always watch Last Chance Saloon because it's a really good document, little like twenty-seven minute piece. So it's kind of annoying. It's not on this. It's kind of annoying that they just kind of miss, missed out on something so good like that. Don't get me wrong, there's a, lo a load of great special features, but like there's some that I think, why have they been taken out compared to others? But yeah, apart from that, that's alright to be fair. Obviously, like I said, I like, um, I feel like the these sort of box sets, the late 80 ones, are a bit better to release than say like something from the 70s. Because these come with a lot of, untr if they don't do updated special effects, they will have extended episodes as well. Like lots of untransmitted stuff will be added in quite a lot in this one and um trial of a time lord and uh season 26 got a lot of different edits didn't it so i wish they would work more on the actual edits because one thing i will notice is when the doctor notices it's the rani there was a new in the new edit there's some new some music added in and when they do stuff like that it just helps enhance the experience because these episodes are already great as they are like i actually quite like time of the rani it's not like the best episode ever written but it's a fun run around um adding extra music and stuff like that into it makes it just a lot more interesting and a lot more engaging if that makes sense but yeah also size wise when you were looking at it in the shelf it's about the same size it's pretty much the same size as this one 
new season, season 8 box set. Got a review on the channel for that, that'll be in the description below. Lovely set, I love the way these pick up on camera, I think they look sick. Um, but yeah, what do I, but what do I think of the series as a whole? Let's get into it. It is definitely McCoy's weakest season, don't get me wrong. But compared to season 25 and 26, this is hella weak. Example, the first three episodes compared to, say, Curse of Fenric and Remembrance of the Daleks, they're so much light-hearted. Definitely, of the three seasons, this is the light-hearted series. This is uh, Diet Coke, whereas the others are full fat, you know, if that makes sense. Um, but I do really like this season. McCoy as a Doctor is one of my favourite Doctors. He's probably what, like my sixth favourite Doctor, I would say. Um, he... So it's a fantastic job in the role, I think. It, from the silly version to the more darker version, I think he does a great job in the role. Uh, so Time of the Rani. I prefer Mark of the Rani, personally, over Time of the Rani. But I do think it's really nice. I do like the introduction of the Tetraps. I think they're a cool and weird villain. I like the the visual effects of their eyes, of how you see multiple different the different angles that they're facing because they have an eye in every part of their head, which I think is kind of cool. I like that. Um... A bit of a forgettable plot, I will admit. I like, uh, but I do like all the stuff where Kate and Mara is pretending to be Mel to trick the Doctor. All that stuff's great. I love all that stuff. I think that's really good. The actual supporting characters, the people on the planet, they're, they're actually all right. To be fair, not too bad. A bit of a forgettable episode. I'm not gonna lie. That's the one problem with Time of the Rani. I wouldn't say it's bad. It's just a bit forgettable. That's what I feel like. There's a bit of a problem with some of these episodes. It's a bit forgettable, especially. This and Delta and the Bannerman, I'd say, are the two most forgettable ones. I'd say Paradise Towers is memorable just for some of the shit that goes in it, like Pex. Uh, Pex, those two old women, the, ro uh, the robot that goes hungry, the caretaker, just the Kangs. There's so much stuff about it that's so memorable. I do really like the setting of Paradise Towers, actually. Um... Delta of the Bannerman is a wacky one. It's a crazy episode. It's all over the place. I remember watching it for the first time. I didn't really expect that to happen. I was just like, what's going on? Just a bunch of people going on holiday. And there's like a, an assassination like hunt plot for a baby or something. A green baby. And I'm just like, and they end up in Wales. And I'm just like, and then you see what those people look like. They're so, the, the aliens look so weird. <laughs> it's funny. Um, but yeah, a bonkers episode, and definitely, and Dragonfire, my favourite episode in this. Uh, introduction to Ace, which is nice. Uh, Glitz comes back, the story of Ice World, the setting of Ice World is gorgeous, the prop work in it, uh, there's, there's so much great stuff in Dragonfire, and there's so much great stuff in Dragonfire, and you can clearly tell from Dragonfire onwards, that's, Dragon Point, Dragonfire is the key Noting it where the door, the winds start to change, if that makes sense. Like, you can feel that darker presence making its way over the series, which is good. Because Sylvester McCoy's Dark Doctor, I feel like, is the highlight of the series. So, it's nice to start seeing that. And the guy who plays uh, the leader in Ice World, the villain, he's great. But a bastard. <laughs> and the dragon also looks really cool. I really like it. But yeah, overall season, definitely my uh, weakest McCoy season, but I still get some, quite a lot of enjoyment out of this. Uh, Mel is a character, she didn't get any time to breathe. She was introduced in season twenty, uh, season 23, but then didn't like she didn't actually get a proper introduction episode. She didn't really have an introduction, and she just leaves. So she's in pretty much 14, so she's in 20 episode, individual episodes of the series. She made it through, two, like, not even a full two seasons. She made it through a season and a half, basically. Not even a season and a half. Uh, no, almost a season and a half. Yeah, if she had um, one more episode, she would have got a season and a half. But, yeah. I don't really know how I feel about her. She's very intelligent. I like how she's very strong-willed. The screaming. Mm, I don't think anyone's a really fan of the screaming, though, are they? To be fair. But, yeah, overall, season 24 is an enjoyable season. My least favourite, very light-hearted. It's a very light-hearted season, but still worth it. I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here. It's, it's about the difference between this set and the slimmed-down version. Is the fact that um, how that stuff is just so stripped out. Basically, you're paying 
seven quid more for a bigger booklet, a bigger box, and that's it. You're not paying for any extra D. So, like, it'd be nice, like, say, if Last Chance Saloon was on this, but it's not going to be on the standard edition, like, just something. If you're not going to get, like, they've put all these special features, if they don't strip some back for the standard edition, or give us something more in this, I don't really see the point. I obviously am going to keep buying the big ones, because I've started now, and I don't, I've been looking at people trying to sell off their big ones, no one's buying them. <laughs> so I'd rather just carry on with what I've done. I'll make space for them, eventually I'll just get a floating shelf on my one. Um... But, yeah, so if anyone from the BBC or makes these box sets, hear me now. Here's a suggestion. Art cards. A couple of, a couple, like, four art cards or a poster would be nice. Just something extra to help justify. If you're only putting physical content as the difference, then can we have more physical content in the sets? Like, I would love a poster. I was thinking about this earlier. It'd be, like, a good, like, with a stand... With like the trim, trimmers uh, edition there that I can see, they have a double-sided poster. So what I was thinking is you could have like this on one side of the poster, and then you could have like that on the other. That would be pretty cool, a double-sided poster. And then the art cards could also be the something that's on the disc. You could have uh, the backdrop bit, you know, the bit that opens up the front bit. You could have an art card at the back of the TARDIS as well. Like, there's so many things like they could do for this sort of like set. But yeah, I feel like that is something that needs to happen going forward because if the sets aren't differ differ differentiated, if the sets aren't differentiated enough, then what's really the point of people buying your product? You know, but. This set for me, I do really like it. Like, I like holding these big chunky sets. I think they look really nice. So for me, this is like happy. But I, at the same time, I do feel like just a little bit more to help justify the big price that comes over. Because this one's the most expensive. This one was forty four ninety nine, whereas they've always been thirty nine ninety nine. So they've upped the price so much, and there's only more special features on it. And they took away Last Chance Saloon. So <laughs> it's the fact that they're oh I don't know. Maybe it's because they did a lot of budget, like maybe they upped the price because they spent more money doing new stuff, which I quite like. But again, I'd like like a little bit of physical stuff with it, you know. That's just me personally. I don't know if anyone else agrees. Would you like a little poster with these? Would you like an art card with these? I would. I'd love to fr frame a double-sided poster of like the booklets from all of this. Like I was thinking about this. Like the uh, the survival esque one from season twenty six, that would be lovely. Or the colony in space one from season eight. There's some great like double sided stuff that I would love to have framed. I think those would be co so cool and just help people make with their like Doctor Who posters if they want to make their more room more Doctor Who. -y. Like it just helps, you know. And it help might help push more people to buy them, you know. I don't know. But yeah, that is my overall opinion and unboxing of the season twenty four box set. Did you guys did you guys manage to pick up this set? Are you holding out for the standard slim edition? What's your favourite story in this? Would you like to see little stuff like art cards and posters and stuff like that in this? Let me know in the comments. Or are you just happy with the are you happy with the set that they've done? Or are you annoyed that they've like me that they've taken some stuff away that you feel like was very valuable like was very valuable to the set? Like people are gonna say this is like stupid, like saying that last chance saloon was valuable. I just think it was a great special feature that more people should see. And if they're gonna get this over the DVD, then they're gonna miss out on that. So hopefully they rectify that and put it in the twenty fifth anniversary season. If they don't, there will be blood. <laughs> Cheers for watching guys. Hopefully you did enjoy this unboxing video and discussion about the episodes and just the review of the set itself. Like I said, leave me a comment below of what you think of the set. Uh, what do you also what do you reckon your next set the next set's going to be? I am thinking a Davison set. I think a Peter Davison season is going to be released. I think we're going to get season 20. We it's either 20 or 21. I just couldn't work out what was more. I feel like 21 probably. But also 20 could be a big shout as well. But yeah, that's it for me today, guys. Go watch some Doctor Who. Go enjoy yourself. Ignore my crazy hair. Yeah. Hopefully, make sure you guys are staying safe out there. You guys have a good one. Fuck me. That is bright as shit. Have a good one, guys. Peace.